If you want to support the channel, go check out my Patreon. There's rewards like end of video shoutouts and even featuring in a video. More rewards will be added and I'd love to hear from you guys to know what I should add. For more information, go to patreon.com slash macwell. It's incredible, we have steamrolled past the Italians as if we were the Ethiopians in World War II. But with just 7 matches remaining, we have the chance to possibly win the league title. 11 points above Juventus gives us a lot of room to make a few mistakes, but really, I just want to win everything and win it as soon as I can. Because our last few matches are Inter Milan and Napoli, and if we have to play those matches while contending for the title still, it might be a bit of a mess. But that is only if we manage to choke terribly, because we are facing Torino, Empoli, Sassuolo, and Cagliari. So let us begin the conquering of the Serie A against Torino. Venezia with the first chance, six minutes played, it's Chiesa receiving it from Tomas Lemar, and he's on the edge of the box trying to find someone, it's Riccardi in the middle, off the first touch, and a goal. 1-0 for Venezia thanks to our assist god himself, Alessio Riccardi. Just a constant barrage of attacks, we were just not going to take no for an answer for this league title. It's Chiesa once again as he leaves it off for Riccardi who stops then pops it into that top right corner, 2-0 to Venezia. And sir, could there possibly be a third? Well who knows, as it's Chiesa bringing it to Moise Keane this time. Same play and same result, it's Alessio Riccardi, the assist god, turning into the hat-trick hero. How's your day been, Empoli? Empoli? Yeah, I thought so. 32 minutes played, chance for Venezia, it's Lasagna to Fiorellino, great passing play, and it's Fiorellino who gets fouled in the box, so it's a penalty for Venezia and a great way to start the match. Empoli. Not this time, bitch! And at this point, it was just time to tear apart the Empoli defense, as here it's Lasagna, not enough speed, so he just brings it to Male. Male then great ball to Dylan Mbayo, who makes it 2-0. Dylan Mbayo could be scoring his last goal of his Venezia a career, but hey, it's 2-0. Once again, another attack, the 69th minute played, this time it's Male to Tesseric. Tesseric bringing it back to Male, and Male, the legend, the Venezia veteran himself, makes it 3-0, as this game is all done and over. But yet again, another attack for Venezia, we were not done with Empoli, as it's Alesh Tesseric taking the shot, taking two deflections, and somehow finding the back of the net nonetheless. And things just got real. 13 points above Juventus, with just 5 matches remaining. If Juventus managed to drop any more points, we are league champions, and they're facing Cagliari, and who knows? Maybe they can help us. Sassuolo. And it was a fantastic start for Venezia already. 17 minutes played. Once again, the early chances just keep coming in. As it's Valerio Romano to Christian Pulisic. And Christian Pulisic just finds some space for himself. And there you go. 1-0 thanks to Captain America himself. But Sassuolo had other ideas as they just wanted to ruin this little league title party we had. As Wu Lei puts it in the back of the net. But you thought that was going to bring our hopes and dreams down? Oh god, absolutely not my friends, as it's Federico Chiesa getting it from Lamar, great ball to Moise Keane, and somehow the keeper just bots around, but hey, 2-1 to Venezia right before the end of the half. We just wanted to stick the sword right down into this match, just end this match right here, as it's Dumfries to Chiesa, and what a blast into the back of the net, as Federico Chiesa quite possibly may have just won the league title for us. Let's go check the results. And boy, oh boy, do we have some news. Juventus dropped points against Cagliari, drawing two all, and we have won the league title. Now, I just want to talk about something real quick. This game sucks, all right? I, I think we all know that. See, what I mean by this is basically the Empoli match, all the announcers were talking about, oh, Venezia, they might win the league title if things go their way. Uh, but the match against Sassuolo, nothing was mentioned. Okay, but anyways, let's just... Let's just celebrate the fact that we have actually won the league title in this area in Season 5. Let's get it, boys! So these next four matches, we really don't need to care too much about them, because, well, we're league winners. But I will still show you the highlights of the matches nonetheless. It's Tomas Lemar whipping in a corner, and here is a punch out by the keeper, and what's this? Oh, well that would be Denzel Dumfries on the floor. Is he going to get up? Is he, uh... Oh, 
fuck. Well, hopefully, it's not too bad. Oh, it's bad. Well, hopefully, things get better for him. It's Tomalemar with the free kick and 1-0. But it's like the game knows I despise this team because they somehow managed to find some goals some way, somehow, and an equalizer by Konate. Oh, but it didn't end there as it's Calabresi crossing it in and it's La Gumina who's just gonna find the back of the net. Alex Medic could not get to that and it's 2-1 to Cagliari. 83 minutes, it's a chance for Venezia now, it's Thomas Lemar who passes it to Kessier and Kessier sees the run by Moise Keane and it's just a simple finish for him. Another goal for the top scorer in the league so far, Moise Keane. And hey, I mean, we get a draw but we still won the league so it doesn't really matter. Inter Milan. No, we didn't unfortunately make Inter our bitch this time because actually they made us their bitch. Or at least for the first 26 minutes. Then we get a chance here. It's Moise Keen. He gets fouled in the box, but really nothing comes of it. But then Kies is fouled in the box, and there you go. A penalty. And now it's Fonkiana Kessier to bury this one, and he dies. And just like that, we equalize. Well, in a way, the game has had an academic quality about it. Everyone on the ground, including the players, really waiting for this moment where they can celebrate their considerable accomplishments this season. The trophy to be awarded any minute now. Well, there's no better place to receive the accolades coming to you than in front of your own fans, giving something back, sharing the glory together. Absolutely fantastic. Well, memories, memories for players in these situations, Lee. Well, it's always nice to win any trophy, cup competitions, but when you win your own domestic league, that, to me, is the pinnacle of being a player. Yeah, the table does not lie. And so, the league champions. They deserve it. They really have been the best team this season. And that's where you end up. Top of the pile. And not by accident either. All part of the master plan. And the trophy is theirs. Well, this is the best moment for me. Sharing things with the fans. They've deserved everything they've got this season. The players have, but certainly the supporters. They've given the players absolutely 100% support all season and this is their reward it's really a match made in heaven between players and fans and these celebrations are going to continue for quite some time well to win any league Derek you have to have consistency you have to be dynamic demanding of your teammates they've been all that and more congratulations would certainly echo those sentiments Lee you are looking at the league champions Hellas, Verona. We played a significantly weaker side in this match as here it's La Cosa in the box, Lombardi himself, that's his- <laughs> 85 minutes played, now it's Alesh Tesserik, our youth academy graduate going into the box, well at least trying to, passing it to Rizzo, now to Male, and now Male just using some footwork to try and get around the defense and the keeper, and the veteran himself has made it 2-0. And that's going to be the end of the match. On to the last match, please. Napoli. You would expect more to happen in this match, but honestly, it just, that wasn't the case. I thought more was going to happen, but not really. But it's Piscina to Yusuf Male, Esposito, great turnaround Kaita, and that is a great finish from the 66-rated striker. So a good way to end the season, three points in our last match in this area of Season 5. And for the final match of the season, we must retain the Coppa Italia against AC Milan. Once again, another match where it was very intense if you played it, but when you show the highlights, not so much, as it's Simon here, getting it past the keeper, a fantastic volley, beating out three of our defenders, and it's 1-0 to Milan. Second half played now, Venezia with the attack. They need to find a goal, as it's Chiesa going into the box, no one in the middle, so he brings it to Kessier, to Riccardi, great turn around the defender, takes the shot, and just 
misses it barely. And now 89 minutes played, the chances are starting to slim down for Venezia as they really need to find something before this whistle blows. It's Moise Keane receiving it from Thomas Lemar, a great finish into the back of the net, and just like that, we are right back in this one. Extra time now and a chance for AC Milan to kick it off as it's Paqueta all by himself and now Paqueta is just gonna take it from way out. Okay, you know what? We may have not retained the Coppa Italia, but we have still won the league nonetheless. With 100 points also, 12 points above second place AC Milan, we dominated the league this season. 101 goals scored and just 24 conceded. That's a goal differential of 77. Not to mention the fact we only lost twice in the league and that was um, against both Roma and um, Roma. But here's just the full table itself, excluding Empoli of course. But to round off your top six, it's us in first, winning the league, then AC Milan, Juventus in third, Napoli in fourth to finish off the Champions League qualification spots, then Inter Milan and Roma to round off the top six. And now for the league stats. Somehow, with just 22 goals, I don't know how he did it, but Moise Keane was the top scorer in the league in 31 matches as well, so he could have honestly scored even more had he played a little more. But then you have second place Team Elvena with 21, then Taliska with 20 goals. But don't forget about the top 10, as Riccardi ranked 10th in the top scores with 14 goals. Fonkiana Kessier wasn't too far away from him either, 12 goals in 35 appearances. Assist-wise, no one really leading the assists for us, but a ton of them are in the top 10, but we'll go through the top three first. We have Vanakin with 26 assists in the league. 26! Then you have Koke from Juventus with 13 assists in 36 matches, and Kostic to round off the top three from Inter with 12 assists. But then you have 7th, 8th, and 9th, all with 10 assists. Doma Lemar, Fankiana Kessier, and Luca Fiordolino, who only played 23 matches and still managed to get 10 assists out of the season. And then we have the clean sheets. And at one point, Alex Merritt was actually second place, but then our defense just kind of made a couple mistakes, and now he's ranked fourth in the clean sheets. 14 clean sheets in nearly half the matches. I mean, that's still pretty good. But the top three is Donnarumma with 23, Chesney with 17, and then Radu with 15. And now your youth academy, we have Emil Koren, 60 rated, potential of 73 to 96. Lorenzo Fantana, 57 rated, potential of 66 to 88. Sandro Schiottis, 15 years old, still looking pretty good, 62 rated, 80 potential to 92. But now it is time for us to go through all of the club stats. And uh, God, I hate editing this. Now listen, right? I, I do this for you guys because I love you guys, but my God, this is absolutely the most mundane part of the editing job for me. Moise Keane, 25 goals and 5 assists. A fantastic season in his first season, and hopefully there'll be more in the second season. Alessio Riccardi, the assist god. I don't know about assist god this season, because he did actually lack the assist, but he increased his goal count with 17 this season. Then you got Fankiana Kessier, the all-around god himself. 15 goals, 16 assists. A very good season for him. Christian Pulisic really bounced back as he had 8 goals and 8 assists in the league and in total had 13 goals and 10 assists in all competitions. An alright season for Federico Chiesa. I would say he was a bit down towards the beginning of the season, but then he picked it up by the time we got into midseason. But 11 goals, 9 assists, 7 goals and 6 assists in the league. Pretty good. Now Tomar Lemar, I know what you're thinking, okay? He had 10 assists. He was good, right? <sighs> <laughs> I honestly really did not enjoy playing with him. I don't know what it is, maybe it's his height or something, but he just gets pushed off the ball way too easily, and yeah, I just can't do it. Then you have Kevin Lasagna, who still scored 8 goals and 5 assists. He actually scored 2 goals in the Champions League, which is pretty impressive. Luca Fiordolino, another great season for him, and yet he's not even a starter. He comes off the bench. He's like the star 6 man of an NBA team. 8 goals, 10 assists. Giuseppe Colombo, right before he got injured, about 2 months before the season ended, he had 4 goals, 5 assists, 2 in the Coppa Italia, and also 1 Champions League goal. A fantastic season for the little 18 year old. Yusuf Male, 
Our Venezia veteran himself still had an alright season. With 9 appearances, he still got 3 goals and 4 assists. Then you have Daniele Esposito, who scored 2 goals and had an assist for himself as well. The Sensei himself, although he didn't score as much, he still got 2 goals and 2 assists in 13 appearances. Dylan Umbayo, I mean, uh... We're, we're definitely selling this guy next season, okay guys? I'm sorry, I love the 99 pace, but uh, he's just... He's not that great. You got La Cosa, Marco Lombardi, growing up to a 70 rated, and also having two goals in this area. Valerio Romano continues his dominance at the left back position, one goal and six assists. Then you have Nicolo Armini, who scored a goal in the preseason tournament. It really doesn't count because I just simmed those. But still, 17 clean sheets and 37 appearances, and this was by far his best year. Denzel Dumfries, before he got injured, he had a goal and two assists, but 23 clean sheets. He was an absolute machine in the right back position. Alesh Tesarek. He had one goal and one assist. Then you have Mohamed Salisu, who somehow got three assists. I don't really recall many of them, but may maybe I do. He also had 16 clean sheets and 38 appearances. He is such a solid center back. He can just push anyone off the ball with no effort. And he's just very efficient with his tackles. Matteo Pessina, this guy just hasn't scored a goal in his two seasons at the club. But still, I mean, three assists, and he's actually pretty solid in the midfield. I'll give him that. So, Fan Francesco Rizzo, 63 rated now. He had two assists in five appearances. Once again, I mean, he's a Youth Academy graduate. I would say that's pretty good. Then you got Alessandro Bastoni, who was supposed to replace Nicolo Armini, Captain Italia, but that just didn't really turn out to be the case. I would still say he did pretty well. 18 appearances and 17 clean sheets, and he also really did well against Juventus when we played against them. Andrea Cistana. Yeah, he, he was alright. And then finally, we'll end this off with Gianfilippo Felicioli, 74 rated. Uh, not really that much being achieved by this guy. He still got 5 clean sheets and 11 appearances, so I mean... At least it's that, I guess. And now time to look at the squad. We got Christian Pulisic growing from an 86 to an 87. Look at them stats. Look at those skill moves and weak foot. Mwah. Moise Keane grew from an 83 to an 85. Again, really good stats we're looking at right now. Federico Chiesa, after two seasons, finally actually grew. Thomas Lemar, nothing really happened. Alessio Riccardi, I believe he grew two ratings from an 81 rating, so good job to him. Uh, we're still kind of determining who will be replaced within the midfield since Nicolas Dominguez is coming in, but we'll just have to see. Also, Fakiana Kessier upgraded to an 84. Valerio Romano, he grew two ratings from an 80 rating. Mohamed Salisu, I think he grew maybe one or two ratings. Nicolo Armini grew from an 80 to an 84, and he is going to probably be the captain next season. Denzel Dumfries, I believe, actually grew one rating as well, even though his potential is 80. Too. Then you got Alex Meta just completely disregarding his actual potential. His potential is supposed to be 87, I believe, and he jumped to an 89 rating, and I mean, he definitely deserved it. He was one of the main reasons why we did so well in the Champions League and the league. Giuseppe Colombo still growing. He's now 78 rated, 96 pace, 72 shooting, 73 passing, 76 dribbling, great agility, the skill moves, the weak foot, I mean... Had we had this guy maybe a little sooner, he'd be a starter, and he would be absolutely disgusting. Alessandro Bastoni, I think, may have grown one rating? Can't remember. And now time to look at the players that will be coming in next season. We have Pau Torres at an 84 rating, his potential is 85. We have Ademola Lukman, 81 rated, he's going to be replacing Dylan and Bayo, and he's going to be a pretty good backup in my opinion. And then we finally have Nicolas Dominguez, who might add even more to the midfield. Actually, he definitely will, with that 86 rating, with that great bit of pace, good vision, really just the complete package for a center mid like himself. And so, that is the end of season 5. I can't wait to edit through all the stat analyzing, uh, but it's for you guys, so yeah. But anyways, I'm actually recording this the day it's gonna be uploaded, so uh, lord have mercy on me. But with that being said, with season 5 done, season 6 is around the corner, and by around the corner, I mean Saturday. Specifically, this Saturday, which is July 11th, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. British Standard Time, or GMT, whatever the hell you use. But yeah, it's gonna be a big season, I'm telling you guys right now. Could we possibly go even farther with the success that we have attained? We're just gonna have to find out next season, then. <laughs>